friends, welcome to another furniture refinishing episode. My name is Walesa from Alay Refurbished. This week's video, I'm going to be painting a beautiful antique buffet. When it comes to refinishing antiques, I have one goal in mind, and that is to update them just enough so that people can see them in today's home. I was not planning on making a video for this piece specifically. Because of that, I have just some pictures and clips to give you an idea of what this piece is used to look before we refinish it. I'm going to be using a transfer, so don't go anywhere. I think you'll enjoy this antique neutral makeover. The person that I purchased this buffet from was downsizing. Even though the buffet had been in the family for a couple of generations, it was just time for him to move somewhere else and had to let it go. To be honest, these kinds of stories make me a little bit sad, but this takes me to the two most common reasons why people get rid of their antiques. Reason number one is because they don't have the room, and reason number two is because the antique doesn't fit their home style or decor anymore. And if you've been here in the channel for some time, you know that sometimes I paint pieces, sometimes I don't. But when it comes to antiques, most of the times I try to do something that will update the look. It's almost like a challenge to me because I need to make people that are not emotionally attached to this piece to find it attractive and to see it in their homes. And as you saw, I'm starting this makeover like I do every other, prepping my piece by first of all, washing all the grease and grime that has accumulated over time with done dish soap and water mixture. Finally doing a scuff sand with 120 grit with the orbital sander and here using the surf prep sanding system the abrasive that I'm utilizing is a medium grit. My surf prep is my go-to sander for any of those details that you see because it won't compromise them. Any wood carvings like this one here, once again, I don't have to worry about them being flattened with my orbital sander. As I'm narrating the video, I'm realizing that I forgot to wear a mask while I send it, so make sure that you play it safe and always wear a mask or a respirator. For sanding the edges, for some reason I went old school and this is what my husband would do, sand it by hand using the hand grips, but it dawned on me like, what am I doing? Why am I doing these by hand when I have my surf prep? Uh, so quick reminder that I have added links to all the products that I'm using today. You can check them out under the video description. As I always like to be truthful about the process and the time that it takes, I want to tell you that even though my surf prep sander cuts down sanding time in half, for these legs I still have to use those hand grips, I still have to do a lot of sanding by hand. The last thing that I want is for you to find my videos deceiving because refinishing the right way is very time consuming and your hands will hurt sometimes, your fingers will get sore and it's just part of it. But again, through the process, I keep focusing about the end results. And I don't know if you noticed at the beginning of the video, there were some male looking hands. Uh, my son wanted to make some cash. And I said, yes, but you need to help me prep this piece. So he actually got a lot of the sanding on those legs out of the way for me, which was kind of nice. I apply some of these glazing and spot putty on what I thought was a small repair, but you're gonna see later in the video how after I started sanding it, some of that veneer flaked off, so I ended up using some bando instead of that. Since I'm planning on staining the top of this piece, I'm using regular filler for it. That way it will take the stain upon application. So this right here is where I was 
telling you about uh, some sanding I'm seeing that some of the wood veneer is pushing in which means it's loose and as I started trying to pick at it it came off like I said it was kind of a larger repair then and I just mixed some regular bando to fill in those gaps while that dried which takes about 30 minutes or so I started protecting the inside of the drawers from any overspray I'm gonna be spraying the primer paint and top coat on this buffet remember that i'm staining the top so i'm also going to be protecting it with these painters plastic tape By the time I was done covering almost everything, it was time to sand this repair and wipe all the dust off. Uh, finally, I need to cover the front legs because those are also getting stained. Being that I'm going to be painting with a neutral color, I really want to black any of those wood tannings with this white shellac base primer. I'm spraying two coats using my ear leg sprayer. Forty-five minutes had gone by after applying the second coat, which meant that my primer had dried and I could use my bendable abrasive with fine grit to achieve a smooth finish on this buffet. I like to use a lint-free paper towel and finally a tack cloth to remove any fussy. This way I can have a clean surface before painting. For this makeover, I'm gonna be using Mountain Mist, which is a beautiful neutral from Lily Moon Paint. For the stained top and legs, I'm using both Moonshine and Wooden Barrel. They're water-based gel stains, also from Lily Moon Paint. When I'm mixing a color, I'm always afraid that I'm not mixing enough. So I try to measure my mixture. Just in case I run out, I can go back and mix the exact same measurement to obtain the exact same results. The stain mixture is light and airy and the goal is to bring down the orange tones that the legs have and the red tones that the top has. I had forgotten from last time how fast drying these gel stains are. They dry quicker than any other brand that I have ever used. And for that reason, I would recommend misting the surface like I do here before applying the stain. This might dilute your gel stain just a bit, which I'm totally okay with it because you can always apply another coat after 20 minutes. 
Depending on how heavy or what method you choose to apply these stains, you might find that sometimes you need to wipe down the excess and other times might not be necessary. These gel stains have a top coat built in and the coverage can be almost too good for my taste, meaning sometimes they can make your piece look like it's painted instead of stained if you apply too many coats in my opinion anyway so i like to apply one coat or two of it and then just use a clear top coat for extra protection on my piece To add a unique touch to this piece, I'm going to be using a transfer from Redesign with Prima. This package includes one transfer design in three separate parts. Once you are ready to apply the transfer, gently pull back the clear release sheet to separate the transfer from its protective paper. I'll be applying mine on the back of the doors. I had already kind of measured it, didn't cut it to the exact size, I actually left a little extra in case I misplaced it so that I could make a correction. Transfers are sensitive to pressure and reliefs when you rub them. So all you have to do once it's in the place where you want it is to rub with this little stick that the package comes with. And it requires a little bit of elbow grease. Gently lift the clear release sheet to check that it has adhered completely. Transfers can be layered, distressed, and sealed. So when I'm ready to top coat my buffet, I'm gonna be top coating my transfer to protect it as well. The inside of the buffet had some scratches and the wood looked very dry after I scuff sanded it with 120 grit. So I apply a couple of coats of the gel stain in the mudslide color. And as you can tell, it made a huge difference. Today I'm applying high performance flat top coat to protect my buffet and since buffets tend to be high traffic pieces I'm gonna be applying four coats. And here are our final results. I thought this piece needed just a little something and I think it's a neat surprise to see all the pretty flowers from the transfers once you open the doors. Let me know what you guys think of this makeover in the comments. I have to say that this neutral color is one of my favorites. being here with me today and I want to remind you to give me a thumbs up if you enjoy today's content and don't forget to turn on your notifications. I love reading all of your comments. Thank you so much and remember that just like there's hope for these pieces of furniture, it doesn't matter how tough things get, there's always hope for you. I will see you guys next week.